everyone, I'm Katie Moritz and today I'm going to talk about the Overtone series and the hammered dulcimer. The Overtone series is a universal acoustic phenomenon. Overtones occur when a resonant object such as a guitar string is plucked or when air moves through a resonant tunnel such as when a flute is being played. It even occurs with the wind when it's whistling outside your house through the trees. And it occurs anytime you hit a string on your hammered dulcimer. For this demonstration, I'm just going to be talking about one string. I'm going to call this one a G. The G I want to represent is going to be this low G here, just for the sake of fitting everything on the staff. Your lowest G on your hammer dulcimer might be an octave above that, but the series will still apply. When you hit this string with a hammer, it's going to begin to vibrate. This vibration of the entire string length is going to produce the fundamental note. G is our fundamental note. The first overtone above G will split that string in half and it will double the frequency. So each of these are producing a frequency that is double that of the fundamental. That note will be one octave higher, another G. The next overtone in the series is gonna split that string length into three. So this takes that fundamental frequency and multiplies it by three. That gives you a fifth, which is a D. The next overtone is gonna split that vibrating string into four sections. So that original fundamental frequency is multiplied by four, and that gives us another octave, which is a G. You can do some research on the entire overtone series, but I'm going to stop here at this next one, which divides my vibrating string length by five that multiplies my fundamental frequency by five and gives me a B. So I have a fundamental low G. My first overtone is one octave above that. My second overtone is the fifth above that. My third overtone is yet another octave. And then my fourth overtone is a major third above that. This is the case for any string on your hammered dulcimer. So if we were to change this to a D, our series would look like this. Our fundamental note would be a D. The next note would be an octave above D. The next note would be a fifth above that, which is an A. The next note would be another octave. And then the next note would be a third above that. So what's a third above a D? F sharp. So you can figure the overtones to any note this way. And obviously this doesn't stop here. It's gonna just continue on until whenever. The intensity of these overtones is what produces the timbre of an instrument. I'm gonna go to my instrument to finish up this demonstration. All right, what we're looking at here, the lowest marked note on my bass bridge is a G. This doesn't necessarily correspond with the same octave that I was using in that illustration, but the same rules are gonna apply. So we know that when I pluck or hit this string, I'm gonna get that series of overtones, an octave, the fifth above that, the next octave, the third above that, and so on and so forth. Much like a guitar or a mountain dulcimer, you can actually pull out the harmonics of one string. It's just a little bit harder because we don't have frets to tell us where to go. Now I'm not very good at this, but if you practice, you could probably get pretty good and incorporate this technique into some of the music that you play. But we talked about cutting that string in half to get the octave. So you have to find that midpoint on your string. I think mine's somewhere around here. That's an octave. There's that fifth, there's that next octave, there's that third, that one came out nice. There's that next fifth, we didn't talk about this, but that's what comes next. Yeah, I got a little bit of two of them in there, but hopefully you were able to hear that. Try that out, it's fun. So all of those overtones are coming into play when I strike this note. The notes on my instrument that correspond with those are the octave, the fifth, the next octave, the third. When I hit this string and mute it right away, listen to what happens. You can hear that octave, 
I can hear a little bit of the fifth coming in. I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. What's happening here is I'm actually muting this string so the overtones are no longer ringing out out of this string. Those notes that you hear, that octave and that fifth above and the next one, those are actually the corresponding strings on my instrument vibrating sympathetically. All of the strings on your instrument are going to vibrate when you hit a note, but the strings that correspond with the notes in the overtone series of the one that you just hit are going to vibrate even more. They're really going to ring out. So try this out on your instrument. Hit this low G and then touch some strings that aren't in the overtone series first and you'll notice they're vibrating a little bit, but when you touch the ones that are, especially that first one and then the fifth even, those are vibrating more than the others. So I think this means something fairly important, and I should preface this all with I'm no expert on the physics behind all of this or the overtone series as a whole, and I'm definitely not an expert on building instruments, but I still think that learning this stuff can really help you with certain aspects of your playing, in particular intonation. So my overtones are ringing out more than anything else. And if my instrument is in tune, that's gonna change the timbre of the whole instrument because the overtones are gonna come into play more than they would if your instrument was not in tune. I'm gonna untune this note just for an example. So say I was tuning and and I decided that that sounded okay, it was good enough for me. Now I'm not trying to insult you, we all know that this sounds bad, but. Just as an example, say I wasn't quite in tune. When I hit this low G, this G up here, this octave above, is still really vibrating pretty strong. Now this G up here is not nearly as strong as it was previously when it was in tune. It's still stronger vibration than the notes around it, so it's still trying to pick up on that overtone, but it's not zeroing in as good as it was when it was actually in tune. So if your entire instrument is like this, if everything's just a little bit off, then it might sound okay, but it's not going to dial in to those overtones as well as it would if it were really in tune. So that's point number one. Point number two, say I'm playing something and I've only got this little box of G in tune and I've tuned it really well because those are the only notes I'm playing. Here's the problem with that. If I'm playing and I've got everything in tune, every time I hit this note down here, and especially when I hit this note, because this note's supposed to be unharmonic, right? They want to be the same note. This note's going to try to lock into that, and it's going to vibrate more than anything else. So that is a problem. Even if you're not playing all your strings, depending on what notes you're playing, those strings are going to start to vibrate sympathetically. And if they're not in tune, then they're going to contaminate the rest of your intonation. And you can use those overtones to get in tune because you can listen and you hear a difference. When it gets in tune, everything starts ringing out differently. I know this was a really long-winded explanation of why you should tune your dulcimer, but the overtone series is really something that is important to understand anyways. And if you're having a hard time with intonation, this gives you yet another tool that you can use to solve those problems.